Uh, this is a video of the of a new add-on to uh, NeuroGuide produced by Applied Neuroscience Incorporated called the Neural Network Injury Index. The authors are here, the, and I'm going to briefly go through the publication that which is available on the Applied Neuroscience Incorporated website at www.appliedneuroscience.com. Then click on articles, and it's article number 59. I'm going to just. Uh, come down here briefly there's an introduction I'm not going to spend time on that I'll let you know that the number of subjects here were 250 normal subjects are age matched to the TBI patients they range in age from 15 to 30 years and then there is a 348 age match uh, TBI uh, patients from the Department of Defense and head injury program that in which we collect the data from 1993 to 2001 and the um, uh, classifications <clears throat> of mild, uh, moderate, and uh, severe were based upon the uh, clinical classifications from neurologists and uh, specialists in uh, medicine uh, at time of admission uh, and uh, post evaluations based upon the length of post traumatic amnesia, loss of consciousness, Glasgow Coma Score, etc. So these are standard classifications of severity of injury. We recorded the EG the same for all of the subjects. We also um, measured Loretta, which is the sources of the EEG and uh, using the inverse solution. And in this, uh, uh, this head injury or, uh, in, or neural network injury index, we focused only on network measures. We did not include any absolute power, relative power, or power ratio. So no power measures. All measures are network measures including from the surface it was coherence phase and amplitude asymmetry and then there was also um, the uh, Loretta uh, in which we only measured uh, the uh, Loretta coherence between Robin areas and Loretta phase differences between Robin areas and not the current density itself in the, as a synchrony within a given Robin area. So this is a network uh, Index is different than anything else we've published or done before, although many of the subjects are included in some of the papers that we've published, but it's exclusively a, a network uh, index uh, indicator. Uh, this table shows the various Brobman areas that were used and, and were classified. These are the Brobman areas that are involved in the different networks, the anxiety network, attention network, the dorsal and ventral, default network, language, memory, mood, and depression and pain. Uh, these networks are based upon PET scans, functional MRI, and, and SPEC scans, as well as EEG over the last 20 years in the uh, human brain mapping program uh, and in the scientific literature. We then created a test discriminative function based upon the surface EEG in which you have to first uh, reduce the size of the universe of measures. You want to obtain a 5 to 1 ratio or a 10 to 1 ratio of subjects to variables. In order to do that, because there's a lot of measures in EEG, uh, you would take the severe and normal subjects. We did t-tests between them. We then based that uh, which uh, variables were 0.05 or 0.01 significant. We uh, selected those variables. We then did a factor analysis on those variables to reduce the redundancy further. And we took the highest loading variables on the factors and then put those into the discriminant function. And the results of the discriminative function are shown here. Now, this is from the surface EEG using connectivity measures only. And uh, the classification, for example, 166 normals, zero were classified as severe TBI. And uh, two of the TBIs are classified as normal. The overall classification accuracy is 99%. So here we took the two extremes. We took the normals and the severe TBI patients and asked how well can we separate these individuals or classify them using a discriminant function. Like all discriminant functions, one must cross-validate them. And the first level of cross-validation uh, was the leave one out uh, cross-validation, also referred to as jackknife, jackknife classification, in which uh, the discriminant function is uh, repeatedly uh, conducted after removing an individual, then calculate the discriminant uh, function and classify that individual as either severe TBI or normal, return that individual to the classification or the distribution, then remove a different subject and repeat that classification iteratively over and over again. 
And we in this this jackknife leave one out replication, we got 97% replication accuracy. We then use completely independent subjects in which we uh, use the same discriminant function, but we predicted that the mild and moderate TBI patients would be halfway between the normal and the severe. As if they are, then that indicates that there's a linear relationship between the severity of traumatic brain injury or concussion and the um, changes in the EEG. It's another form of cross-validation that we now in this case with an independent group. And so there's 84 normals, uh, 40 TBI uh, severe, uh, 125 moderate TBI, and uh, 88 mild. And these, sure enough, were, these classifications were intermediate, which is shown here, between the normals and the severe TBIs. Severe TBI is in red. This is the distribution of discriminant scores for, for the severes. The blue are the distribution of discriminant scores for the normals. And the moderates and the mild TBI patients were intermediate between the severe and the normals. And in fact, the moderate was closer to the normals than the severes. Well, and, or, and, I'm sorry, the milds are closer to the normals. And uh, then the moderates and the moderates are closer to the severe than were the milds. Again, indicating that there's a linear relationship between the magnitude of injury to the brain and the change in the, uh, the brain as measured by the EEG with respect to healthy normal subjects with no history of traumatic brain injury. These discriminative functions then allowed us to create this type of uh, network injury index where the severity of, of deviation in, on the classification accuracy of the discriminant function is shown here in this type of dial, and I'll be showing that in a minute to, uh, so you can see how it works inside of NeuroGuide. Now this is how we, we repeated actually this entire discriminative function using Loretta coherence, Loretta phase. This part of the paper shows you where the variables came from and what these different Robin areas uh, represent in a functional context. And uh, there's the networks and the Robin areas that made up the networks that went into the discriminative function, the anxiety, uh, tension networks, language network, memory, mood, pain. And this shows one example of how well we could separate the severes versus the normal dis in the discriminant scores. And, um, and then we also did a regression analysis to see how well the surface uh, discriminant function predicts the a deeper Loretta source discriminant function and vice versa. And we got very high correlations, highly significant, as you can see over here. So they cross-validate each other surface versus the depth of the networks, which then allows us to create this index that we'll be showing in a minute, uh, in which here's the test EEG data that has uh, different times of test. For example, the first one could be uh, that here is uh, a baseline measure, and, and this is a the EEG uh, shortly after a concussion or traumatic brain injury. The radar maps are very useful because they show the the uh, this is the dashed line is the two standard deviations. The uh, solid black line here is the baseline measure that corresponds to this uh, line. And then the red is five standard deviations where the patient was following the injury. We happen to have this was a football player in which we were able to get, it's a high school football player, in which we were able to get a, uh, a baseline uh, before injury and then track them out after injury. And that's one of the uses of the injury index, the network injury index, is that you can track out using these radar maps the recovery from concussion, the recovery from injury. So here's the uh, more severe shortly after injury. And then over time, you can see the contraction of these z-scores on these different networks towards the normal functioning state. So let me show you now how we uh, calculate this in NeuroGuide so you can see how it's done. Essentially what you do is first, uh, I'm going to go down here first, but you go to Analysis, Network Injury Index, and then a navigation window comes open. But what you need to do is create a, a folder that has the, uh, the, the patient's EEG in. Um, if you have baseline, put it in there, but it's got to be edited EEG that is it, that has no artifact in it and has 0.9 uh, test retest reliable. 
and <clears throat> let's call it John Doe. So you label the folder John Doe, and then in John Doe's folder, you have the succession of EEGs that you measured following the injury. It could be a soccer head injury. It could be boxing injury. It could be a football injury. Uh, it could be a baseball injury. So you can track the um, changes in the brain, <clears throat> but you need to put these EEG data's, data in the app folder. And when you do, click Done, and then NeuroGuide will uh, go through that um, folder list and, and uh, rank order the data analysis based upon the dates that you have here of the, of the, uh, of the EEG and uh, then uh, sequentially process it. Now that will take some time, so I'm going to just skip that part and show you what the, the, the output will look like when you complete it, which is up here. Uh, this is an example of a baseline that I was showing previously, EEG. I was able to select it here. If I deselect it, it'll go away. It shows that uh, the discriminant score for the networks is right within the, uh, you know, right around one standard deviation. These are the absolute phase, the cross spectrum, the lag coherence and instantaneous coherence. These are surface measures. That are, this one is independent of volume conduction, amplitude symmetry. So these are the network measures from the surface. These are the network measures up from the depth inside the brain. And uh, then you can see that after his injury, uh, he immediately uh, had a deviation from normal and had a fairly uh, severe uh, TBI. Uh, and as a consequence, his, all of his networks then deviated from normal and so did the surface. But then he started to recover. Uh, with successive measures of the EEG, you can see here this is a, a much an improvement over the, the initial EEG following injury, and then there's a contraction of this radar map, and you can keep tracking this individual out over time with successive EEGs and see that he now is returning to normal. And there was a successive contraction of the severity of the discriminant functions both from the surface and in the networks inside the brain. This also allows you to look at the history of the um, um, of these measures. Network injury index itself is changing as a function of the number of tests. There's where he was uh, baseline and then eight uh, tests. And you can isolate particular um, items if you want by deselecting. I'm going to look at the memory. The recovery, and you can see that the memory is by itself. You can see how it's changing, and this baseline or dashed line here is two standard deviations, which is an indicator of back to play point where the brain has gone back sufficiently towards normal that one could consider uh, going get getting back on the football field. Uh, then you can look at the change in these individual uh, measures. Um, and by uh, and deselect and select them. You can uh, print this. You can save the raw digital data, and there and this way you get a good view of the severity of injury, the rate of change of the brain uh, as a function of time following injury, uh, and also the, the degree to which uh, treatment may have impacted the recovery from the traumatic brain injury. So this is the uh, network injury index that's available. Uh, inside of NeuroGuide, it's an add-on to NeuroGuide, uh, and uh, it's available now in the next release of NeuroGuide, which is uh, NeuroGuide 2.8.6. And uh, if anybody has any questions, please uh, contact Applied Neuroscience. Go to our website at uh, www.appliedneuroscience.com and go over to uh, About and then Customer Support, and we'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have.